Mr. J.D. Patil joining us now, a member of the board, Defence and Smart Tech at LNT, to discuss, uh, uh, you know, a whole host of uh, positive factors that are, uh, in fact, taking place there. Mr. Patil, thanks so much. Congratulations, first of all, on the delivery of the first hardware, a booster segment uh, for uh, the Gaganyan launch vehicle to ISRO, and that's ahead of schedule, despite what we've seen with the pandemic and restrictions. How did the company manage that? Uh, in, in fact, it's a, it's a long story, but uh, we started the manufacture of this uh, uh, specific hardware. You know, the, being a human flight, it had to be extremely tighter in tolerances. It's a two-order uh, better as compared to what normally uh, we fly. And of course, uh, with many design changes and many more quality-related uh, uh, changes to make it far, far, far superior and safer for our uh, uh, astronauts to go up in the sky. Uh, this is something which we took uh, precisely about nine months, of which about four months we were hardly working. Uh, that's a period, two months of a complete lockdown and about two months of about one-third, one-fourth one the manpower on the shop. Uh, we obviously had to manage by ensuring that uh, people don't come too far close, uh, every possible safety measure, as, as well as enormous amount of support from the local government to be able to give us those permissions well ahead of anybody else in the industry for varieties of reasons, uh, the kind of critical hardware that we produce at our factory here in Bombay. Sure. So, you know, where was, uh, you said, of course, your factory in Bombay, what was the original timeline as well? And you know, you LNT is playing a vital role in powering um, ISRO's human space flight program. Tell us a little bit more about that. In fact, we've been part of uh, ISRO's ecosystem, and I must say it's a matter of pride for us uh, to be associated with ISRO from 1971. So, come 2021, and that's 50 years of our partnership. So, there's obviously from the smallest of the rockets which ISRO made those days. Uh, to the biggest of the rockets that we produce today. Uh, it's been an amazing relationship uh, wherein the entire development in terms of new manufacturing skills, the new kind of metallurgies, it's a journey which is full of those. And of course, from rocket motors, we moved on to various other segments of the launch vehicle. And in addition to that, enormous amount of uh, giving let's say complete independence to ISRO because we know that ISRO and the, the nuclear power where the two sectors of Indian economy uh, being strategic in nature had uh, faced enormous amount of sanctions all through, right from 70s. So it's essentially uh, organizations like uh, us and of course uh, the kind of scientific minds in ISRO have created lots of wonders and these programs are completely independent of any imports from anywhere, right from the basic raw materials. And of course, the sensors which track all the satellites in, in, in the sky, ultimately after they go, uh, they need a monitoring systems. So we have been associated right from the Chandrayaan uh, when the first, uh, let's say, lunar mission went up. And of course, uh, the second as well, and of course, the uh, uh, Mangalyan. And each of these have been uh, enormous, I would say, milestones in the history of the space and then there was a, a sort of a re-entry vehicle. We made some extremely important control surfaces for the re-entry vehicle. And now the main boosters, which is what we have delivered. Uh, the original time frames for these, the, any new development, essentially the time frames are much longer. Otherwise, we typically do this kind of, um, uh, let's say for a normal uh, GSLU Mark III flight, this would be six to seven months of duration. If we today take, let's say, what we have taken typically a little more than nine months, but discount the nearly three and a half, four months of not working, we actually have done it better than what otherwise we would do during the normal times. And that's essentially where the skill and, of course, the readiness of right. the team that made all the difference. Right, and Mr. Patil, you know, can you give us a sense as to what the outlook is in terms of revenue generation from the defense engineering vertical? What kind of order execution as well you've seen in the past quarter? Uh, on the hardcore uh, defense, uh, we essentially do typically about 4,000 crores a year. And that's essentially what was our last uh, financial year. Uh, 
uh, we obviously see some uh, challenges to uh, reach uh, those precise numbers, but somewhere close to that. Uh, even for this year, which essentially has seen good amount of lockdowns. Uh, that's typically the kind of size and that makes us uh, among the largest in the private sector and rather the largest in the private sector and comparable to many of the public sector government-owned organizations. Of course, there are few which are larger than us. So that's essentially where uh, in terms of hardcore defense equipment that we produce, the uniqueness of uh, Lassen Tubro in uh, the defense space and what we call as defense engineering, uh, that's a space where bulk of what we have done has been through our own in-house uh, research and development associated either with the Indian Navy or for that matter, uh, DRDO. And there are hundreds of programs that we did with defense research as well as the Navy. And then even more uh, we've done through our own in-house R&D funding. So that's essentially where it puts us uniquely into a position when any of our own products finally get accepted by the end user, they, we, we, we get to produce them exclusively. And that's essentially the uniqueness about this model. It's years and years and decades of work, obviously, in terms of doing uh, technologically extremely futuristic work. And then that's essentially converts into numbers in the form of where we are today. Uh, this is quite sizable. Sure, as Mr. Patel. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, if you could just give us a view as to how you've read into the recent policy boosting measures for defense and what your outlook is here, what more would you like to see being done? I see the policies uh, to be extremely supportive. The government has realized that uh, supply chains can't be long and they can't be foreign dependent. So series of measures that we have seen in last three or four months, uh, one being the new defense acquisition policy, the defense export as well as production uh, uh, policy, and of course, the negative list. Now, that's essentially where an organization like Las Dubro, which has built hundreds and hundreds of products on its own, benefits the most because the negative list means these shall not be imported uh, going ahead. And when they are not going to be imported, they've got to be done here. And that's essentially where if you did that kind of work earlier and proven your capabilities and physically produce those kind of systems tested by the user, accepted, that's essentially where the uniqueness gets in. Now, that's where these policies we see making a huge difference in times to come. And of course, much more to happen in terms of uh, the next five years. The government has made an announcement uh, to reach the defense industry to 175,000 crore per year, which today is roughly about 70 to 80,000 crore. So it's more than doubling. And that doubling comes through some amount of exports, which is typically a target is about 35,000 crores. From that 10,000 crore, which today we are doing uh, an export as an overall Indian uh, economy, for Lassen Dubro, we typically do about 15% of our revenues as exports as of today. But that's something which will grow in addition to our indigenous um, manufacturing programs will grow. We are into uh, warships into submarines and varieties of weapon systems that we produce, including the battle tank related major armored systems. And that uh, stands in good stead for Lassen to grow to keep growing with these kind All of. All right, uh, Mr. Guru, that we'll just have to wind it up there. Uh, sorry to, to cut you short. We've completely run out of time to hit a break. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great chatting with you this morning.